everybody, welcome back to the Kelly Eden channel. October is coming to a close and I'm actually so sad because I had so much fun this month. Um, so now I'm starting the tradition, the, the great YouTube trope of monthly faves. So this is my uh, 2018 October faves. We got the Backstreet Boy uh, Bless Up uh, notebook that I got here and I wrote down all my faves. Now this one's a, kind of a long list, so I'm gonna try to keep it real real small and short I, but you know me I, why do I even say that I go overboard anyway I, I over exaggerate everything okay um, where do I want to start you guys this was such a good month like I really I had a really fun time embracing like spoopy scary things um, I had a lot of fun doing old things like the pumpkin patch with my, my cousins they, these aren't even on my list let me just focus Okay, I'm gonna focus and do what's on my list. Yeah, number one, I'm going to say that um, a monthly fave was going to the pumpkin patch uh, with my cousins and my sister and carving the pumpkin and uh, roasting the seeds like we used to when we were kids and baking a pie. Um, and then at the end, we took the pumpkins to Austin's grave, which was like, it was pitch black at night and it was freezing, but it was nice to kind of stand around his grave uh, and, you know, just in silence and just like hold each other and just feel like, were a little bit more connected, I guess. Um, it felt very therapeutic, it felt healing, especially like doing all the things that we did as kids, you know? Um, so yeah, that's my first one. What else do we got? Ooh, using liquid lipstick as eyeshadow. So if you guys have seen uh, most of my makeup tutorials this month, I've pretty much been using exclusively liquid lipsticks on my eyes, which, yeah, today, this is all liquid lipstick. And you know what, it's not approved for the eye area, but I. I just don't care. It's worth it anyway. It looks real good. I love blending it. It, it reminds me of painting, I think, is what I really like about it. I feel like I have more control over using liquid lipsticks like paint rather than um, eyeshadow that's like chalky and kind of, you know, the fallout and everything like that. Uh, I mean, obviously, I was brought up as a painter, you know, that's like my very makeup of my being. So I think that's why I like it so much. Also, it just stays really well. It doesn't crease. It just like is brighter. Like, look at this. This is after 12 hours. I got up at 6 a.m. this morning. Yeah. So I'm really digging it. I really hope I don't get an eye reaction. So uh, why don't you guys just wish me luck, okay? Um, Let's see, what else do we have? I wanted to talk about Ash Lash, which is what I'm wearing today. Now, this is one of my friends um, who I modeled with at Pinup Girl Clothing. She's so, so sweet. And she's really, um, she's a very famous like pinup model. She's gorgeous, like outstandingly gorgeous. And she worked really hard to release this lash line. She sells eyelashes, sunglasses, um, eyelash adhesive, and some other accessories here and there. And um, she sent me a couple pairs of lashes and I was just blown away by the quality of her lashes. Like the style is so beautiful. They're soft yet dramatic. Um, the quality is really, really nice. I highly recommend my favorite style is either Lana or Lolita and Dolly. Lolita is probably my favorite style. I, I wear it all the time. Like, I love her lashes. Now, they are a little bit more in the pricey range. They're about $20, but like, it's really worth it. And I always kind of try to tell people to support, you know, smaller businesses or, um, you know, influencers who are just starting their business, especially in the makeup line. Because like I've said before, I think in the makeup industry, it's so oversaturated. Like there's so many brands coming out with almost the exact same things and it's really hard to create something unique and uh, something special. And I think Ashley has done that and I'm really proud of her. So Ashley, if you're watching, congratulations. I'm, I gotta get on your website, girl. I gotta order like six more Lolita lashes. Okay, okay, we'll, we'll jump into this one. Um, this is probably one of my absolute faves is Cardolan Audio and I found his channel when I was just, you know, doing my thing, looking for kidnapping vampire ASMRs to lull me to sleep and I found Cardolan Audio and he has a huge channel. So I started listening to his stuff. I highly recommend the three-part series of Dark Brew. That's like my favorite kidnapping series. Um, and he's got like a huge range of different styles that he does. Like some of them are really soft and cuddly and caring ASMRs. Some of them are dark. Some of them are like very sexy. Some of them are just very like platonic. Um, whatever it is that you're looking for, he's just got like such a wide variety in his library, which is just 
amazing. Uh, the dude has a beautiful voice. It's so velvety. I can't even describe it. Um, and he's a good actor. Like there's so much conviction to his voice, no matter what he's saying, you know, with whatever script that he has, you know, that he's like really studied it. He's really, um, grasped the character that he's becoming and he really just kind of goes for it and dives deep. I love that. I absolutely love that. Um, and then I found out he had a Patreon and he's got a not safe for work um, erotic audio section and you best believe I've been listening to that every single night because I have a single Pringle. No, but really, it's, it's actually really beautiful. Now he, here's the thing, let me back up a little bit. I'm gonna say something a little personal. Um, I went through a really long relationship with somebody who just didn't really find me sexually attractive and just didn't want to be intimate with me or touch me in any way. And that really weighed heavily on my self-esteem and I didn't, like, I didn't feel beautiful, I didn't feel sexy, I didn't feel alluring, I just kind of felt like a blob, you know? And I, I know it wasn't my fault, but you know, how things get into your head and you know, sometimes your insecurity just takes over. But <laughs> out of all the things that I've done for my mental health, whether it's antidepressants, seeing a therapist, chiropractor, acupuncture, I could never really fix how I really felt about myself like in a, a sexual way um, until I listened to Carlin Audio. And there's something about, um, we've talked about positive affirmations, right? Telling yourself positive things and really believing them. And I think it's so powerful to listen to those positive affirmations come from another person, a person you don't know, a person you can't even see. Yeah, listening to his audio stuff has really just like helped me get back into my body and feel like, really feel like I am a sexy person. And just, um, I guess it's it's kind of like relit this fire in my heart of like, oh yes, I, I remember what this feels like. I can feel like this, you know? Um, so yeah. That I, I can't speak highly enough about Cardlin Audio and I highly recommend uh, checking him out or, or Patreon or whatever that you want. I honestly just want to make a full dedicated video to him because he is just like, th this is like my favorite creator of the year and it's just really helped me in such a deep psychological way and hopefully it will for you too. I don't know. Okay. Um, moving on. Ooh, let's go to the Netflix originals. We've had two really good ones that I completely fell in love with. Um, let's start with the Curious Creations of Christine McConnell. This, if you like a bear in the big blue house and like Adam's family and the Muppets and Elvira and Dita Von Teese, like you gotta watch this. Um, it's kind of like, um, God, how do I even describe this channel? It's so over the top. Christine is just a really beautiful, super talented creative woman and she has this show where she like lives in this house that's kind of like mine and I feel like she's like a distant relative like a, a, a sister or maybe a, a, a an aunt or something like I feel like, we're, I feel like we're related you know and especially like looking at her house her aesthetic and all the creations that she does I'm like girl are, are we related somehow or like do you have like a, a, a different dad that you're not telling me about or something Anyway, overall, I just feel a connection to her, and I just adore her. And she lives in this house with these, like, two little Muppets and all these little dark little characters. And the humor is very fun. It's lighthearted. It's kind of like in that 90s, like, slap silly, kid-friendly way, but still it's adult humor, and I really love that. There's something about that that really tickles my heart and, like, puts a little warm, cozy robe over it, and I feel like I'm home, you know? So what Christine does is she makes um, creations. Sometimes she makes a, a cake that's like a realistic house. Sometimes she'll make a dress and everything she does, she goes step by step. And it's really like, her creations are so over the top and so amazing that it's not necessarily there to like really guide you through how to make it. I see it's more of like, entertaining and inspirational. You know, watching it for me, I may not want to make a house cake thing that's like six feet tall, but I might get inspirations of like how to use my sculpting tools or like um, different coloring techniques that I can use. And I think that things like that, that are um, bringing the arts into, um, visual arts into um, online entertainment or Netflix entertainment or just like visual movies, theaters, every, anything like that is such a beautiful thing because I think there's a huge gap uh, that's happening with, with the art world. A lot of art programs and classes are getting cut due to budgeting with schools, and we're really losing um, our, our grasp with art in America, so I think that kind of sucks. Um, so I think that what I really love about this show is not only like the fuzzy feelings it gives me, but it's, it's like, it's a reminder of like, here, visual art is still part of the game, and I'm still being part of mainstream media, and here it is, and I'm entertaining you with it. So that's something that I'm like, thank you, Christine. I, I'm gonna keep on watching, and I do hope for another season because the show is, is just so adorable. Okay, so the next one, the, next, the Netflix original, Haunting of Hill House. 
This was a pretty spoopy one and I just kind of like happened to come across it. I have these days that I call reset days where like if I work a full week, like 6 a.m. to 10 p.m. just I'm a workaholic I just have a habit of just working non-stop and then I, I basically work myself to a point where I just like can't do anything anymore so I have a full day of just like saying it's like sitting in bed or on the couch and just kind of watching Netflix and just you know drinking water and tea and just trying to like let my soul rest a little bit so the whole day I watched The Haunting of Hill House which I found out is actually a remake I don't know what I haven't seen the original um this was <sighs> You know, I, I wouldn't say it's really scary. Um, I've seen a lot of people say that they've fainted while watching this. Um, it takes a lot to actually scare me just because I think, um, especially when it comes to things about like ghosts and spirits and hauntings, I think my brain wants to think so logical that it won't believe that. Do you know what I mean? Um, what I liked about this story was the, um, how do I say this? I loved the realistic aspect of the family dynamic that it has in it. And I don't want to give away too much, but it deals a lot with um, conflicts with family, different beliefs, different uh, paths of lives that people take, you know, with their siblings when they grow up. And, you know, they might have been really close as kids, but as they grow up, they're just completely different people who can't even relate anymore, let alone communicate on a regular level. I appreciated the realism with that. I appreciated the open honesty and the the effect that the actors had on me. Um, one thing I really, really appreciated was actually they, they talked about grief and they really showed it in a very, very real way where um, they even talked about um, embalming the body and what had to be done to the corpse to get it ready for a funeral and, and different stages that they were going through with mourning. And I just... That was something that I personally just appreciated so much because I feel like there's, you know, I've talked about this before where I think there's a huge gap in uh, mainstream media or just um, our society as a whole is we don't talk about death, you know? We might talk about it in a dark, like, humorous way or we might talk about it um, in very violent, uh, you know, horror stories, but there's a disconnect of, like, the personal attachment to it. And I think as soon as death hits home, it becomes very scary and we don't want to talk about it. So I liked this series because they really just went for it and they just showed you the raw truth of what it's like to grieve a loved one and how deep that affects you and just the kind of different things that you'll go through with your family and just how much how much it hurts, you know? And I, I really appreciate that. Like, it's hard to watch, like it's heartbreaking, but it's just, I, I really want grieving to be a normal conversation. I want it to be something that is um, not something we shy away from, something we prepare for, something that we can talk about openly. Um, other than that, I thought the story was beautiful. The cinematography was absolutely gorgeous. The coloring, the hair, the makeup, the clothing, the way that the house looks is stunning. Um, also, the the pattern in which they were telling the story and kind of going back and forth between timelines was really, really fascinating and it kind of kept you guessing and it was just a really enjoyable, um, I don't know if I would even call it horror, a uh, horror series. I, I honestly, it's more of like a drama that's a little bit spoopy and disturbing. But um, yeah, I just loved the realistic connection it had. It wasn't so much like, I hate slasher films. Like I hate Saw and I hate uh, just senseless violence that rely on gore to scare you. I just can't stand it. I just don't think there's anything to it. But something like this is so much more impactful to me because it hits you on that real level. And I think as soon as something impacts us, something hits home, that's when we get that real emotion out of us, you know? So I think they were really successful with that. Oh, what else do we got? Well, a lot of things happened this month. Oh, I want to talk about The Midnight. Now, The Midnight is my favorite band. Oh my god, I love them so much. I discovered them when I was at TwitchCon last year. I was working for League of Legends Revolution and I was um, in this like elf cosplay. I was playing this elf character for uh, League of Legends. Uh, not League of Legends, I'm sorry. It's, um, oh my god, what is it called? Lineage. Lineage 2 Revolution. Oh my god, what am I even thinking? Yeah, Lineage 2 is a Korean game and they hired me and like Chris Villain and a group of other friends to cosplay as their main characters for this big promo that they were doing. Um, and Chrissy Lin was doing our makeup and our hair downstairs and she had her phone down there and she was playing The Midnight and I just like fell in love with it. I was like, oh my god, Chrissy, what, what is this band? And she was like, it's The Midnight Girl. So I've been listening to them ever since, and they recently came out with their new album, which is called Kids. Please listen to this. Like, go on Spotify. It's a pretty short album, and there's um, 
God, how do I even explain the midnight? This is another um, artistic element that really just stabs you in the heart. There's something about it that hits home, that reels you in. Um, the album of kids is kind of like, it's very nostalgic on the 80s, but in a way that's not cheesy. It's a way that's like, oh yeah, I remember the sound, the tempo, the something about like all the sound effects that they use, the instruments that they use, and even like the way they're narrating their story feels so familiar. It feels like home, but it's also new. Um, and also the, um, the lyrics made me cry, and this was a little bit closer to um, when Austin passed away, and I think a lot of the lyrics and uh, the symbolism behind this album was you know, really prevalent to like what I was going through and what I was thinking about my youth and the youth that's coming up. Um, it's just, uh, it's really beautiful. And it's just so much fun to listen to. They kind of have like, I know it sounds very sad, but they have kind of like these melancholy lyrics with this really upbeat tempo. And I just, God, I love it. Also, if you're gonna check them out, my favorite, favorite songs are Gloria, Vampires, and The Comeback Kid. You just listen to those three at least. Like if you don't fall in love with them after that, I don't, I don't even know, dude. Um, so at the beginning of the month, I went to Colorado to have a short visit. What's on the back of this? All right, what else we got? At the beginning of the month, I went to Colorado to visit my family. I was with my sister, my mom, my cousins came to visit for a while. And while I was there, I took a lot of time for self-care, like real self-care. Um, because uh, one of the things that I really missed about being in Colorado was my acupuncturist, Dr. Christina Fick. And then I was newly introduced to um, a chiropractor, Dr. Steinle, who was just amazing. So these two, um, God, where do I even begin? I guess I wanna start with chiropractic. And I want to, um, I will eventually make two videos about both of these experiences because they actually have a lot to do with mental health. Um, Dr. Steinle um, was, have you ever had like a doctor and you like went to them with like a, a real concern and you tell them and you're really sincere and it just feels like that doctor doesn't care? and that doctor just kind of wants to throw some meds at you and send you on your way. Like how many of you have had that happen? You know, it's not a good feeling. When I went to Dr. Steinle, there was something like, have you ever met a person and there's something about them that immediately puts you at ease? Something about them that's like a glow, something that makes you feel like this is a good person. This is someone that I can trust. It might be like the softness of their eyes, the way they're looking at you, their aura, their charisma. I don't know what it is, but Dr. Steinle had that. And uh, he was very much so a doctor that actually cared. And he actually took my x-rays and like had like a really long consultation with me and just like really asked and listened. He was like, okay, so what's going on? Like, tell me everything. Do you have numbness in your arm? Like, what's going on? How are you sleeping? What way do you sleep? I can't even explain it, but we'll get into that in the video. Um, I think it's just the fact that I found a doctor who actually really cared and helped me understand what was wrong with me, um, what was wrong with my back and how that was connecting to subluxation with my nervous system and how that was affecting different parts of my body, you know, the things that I didn't even know. So not only did he care enough to find out what exactly was wrong, he took the time to educate me and he took the time to really um, help me understand what I needed to do to get better. So uh, look forward to that video because I just, I can't speak enough about Dr. Dr. Steinle, he's amazing. Uh, he's in, uh, I think it's health and wellness chiropractic in Evergreen, Colorado, which I'm sure is like in the middle of nowhere for you guys. But if you ever find yourself in Colorado, just like go visit him. He's amazing. Um, and then Dr. Christina Fick, I used to get acupuncture done all the time. And I actually hadn't, like since I moved out here, it had been six years since I had it done. So I went to visit Christy for a treatment and I just like, I just remembered how much I love acupuncture, uh, cupping, and it's just like very much, um, Christy is a very smart woman. Like she knows so much, it just blows my mind. Like she is a badass woman and I just love seeing her. I love being around her. She's just like a boss. And um, she's another doctor who really cares, who really um, wants to dive deep understand what it is that you're struggling with and really like, you know, if it takes blood tests or interviews or anything, she wants to figure it out and she wants to help adjust you accordingly to the point where you're not going to have to rely on her for like, you know, seeing an acupuncture once a week for the rest of your life. You know, she wants to help you get better. Um, so yeah, I had a couple treatments with her and that felt really wonderful. And it also just felt really good to pick her brain um, and just kind of learn more things about uh, the benefits of acupuncture or chiropractic and just how that affects mental health. So we'll talk about that a little bit more in the next videos. Um, what else do we have here? 
Okay. Um, and I guess I'll end it with just like a personal thing that I've been working on. Um, if you guys are on Spotify, you can actually look me up. Just type in Kelly Eden and you can see all the playlists that I've made. Um, I made one playlist. It's called Toshi Adventures, which I created specifically for um, kind of decompressing if I'm feeling anxious or depressed just to help me relax. Uh, these are all the songs that I listen to when I'm taking Toshi on a walk or just kind of like laying in bed, just trying to kind of decompress and unwind for the day. It's all these just like really unique relaxing songs by all these really unique and quirky artists and it just reminds me of Toshi, you know? Uh, a lot of people are like, well why is it Toshi's playlist? I'm like, it's, it's just all his favorite songs, it's just what he likes to listen to. So give it a try in case you're interested. Um, it's obviously not like a, a doctor prescribed playlist or anything like that, but it helps me and it's worth looking into if, you know, it might help you too. All right, I guess that's it for October faves. I had a lot of fun this month, so I'm looking forward to November and then Vlogmas and oh my God, I don't even know what I'm gonna do. So uh, until then, I'm gonna do the regular YouTube outro. You can subscribe, hit the bell button for notifications. You can comment, you can share, you can dance if you want to. You can leave your friends behind if your friends don't dance and if they don't dance and they're no friends of mine.